For years, if you were looking to buy a three-row mainstream crossover from Hyundai and Kia, they were simply just at the bottom of your list because they just weren't very competitive. I mean, Hyundai has always had the Santa Fe and Santa Fe Sport, which later was renamed to the Santa Fe XL, while Kia has always offered a three-row version of the Sorento, which was simply just too small for American families. Now, thankfully, both manufacturers have learned from their past mistakes with the all-new 2020 Hyundai Palisade and 2020 Kia Telluride. Now, I've actually had a chance to drive both of these three-row SUVs at their media drives earlier this year, and I came away super impressed. These are some of the top-performing SUVs in the segment. So if you're in the market for a three-row crossover and these two are at the top of your list, how do you possibly decide between the 2020 Palisade and Telluride? That's what we're here to find out. So looking at the front fascia of both of these vehicles, trying to decide between which one is better looking is like trying to decide between Coke and Pepsi because both of these cars have their own distinctive look and really it's just gonna come down to your own specific taste. Now me personally, I actually prefer the look of the Telluride over the Palisade. I think the Palisade is slightly overdone styling wise for me, but again, some of you would disagree with me and that's perfectly acceptable. You can see the Kia has a much smaller grill than the Hyundai. This is the company's corporate tiger nose grill. They spell out Telluride at the front these headlights, which are nice and rectangular, these are the full LED headlights that you get on the SX trim with an amber illuminated daytime running light, and you also have LED fog lights. Keep in mind, the SX trim, the fully loaded trim, is the only one to give you full LED headlights. All the other trims of the Telluride will just have a halogen projector with a normal colored LED running light as opposed to the amber one, which again, this car kind of looks like an Escalade, kind of looks like a Range Rover, so some of you may prefer the look of the Telluride. Now in contrast, let's take a look at the Palisade because the Palisade wears the corporate front face that Hyundai introduced on all their SUVs back on the Kona and also the uh, Santa Fe. You can see the headlights and the daytime running lights and the turn signals are separated from the actual elements. The headlights are on the lower portion, but Hyundai does give you a full LED on the SEL premium trim and this top of the line limited. So they do offer the LED headlights on other trims versus the Kia. The LED running lights here at the top with the turn signals have two elements that kind of connect with each other at the uh, headlight and at the top portion, which does look very distinctive. So again, let me know in the comments below which one you like. Now the grill, this is Hyundai's uh, corporate cascade waterfall style grill with this silver finish. It's a lot more blingy on the Hyundai. There's a lot more chrome. There's a lot more, you know, shinier bits. So me personally, I do prefer the look of the Telluride and also the Hyundai is lacking fog lights. You cannot get fog lights on the Palisade. So looking at these two SUVs from another angle, this is what I would like to call badge engineering done right, because even though these cars ride on the same platform, they don't share a single body panel even when you look at them from the side profile. The windows, the doors, the mirrors, even the windshield are different parts. They will not interchange with each other. And this is where a lot of other manufacturers could learn a thing or two from Hyundai and Kia about badge engineering. Now, both of these cars are actually pretty similar lengths, but you should know that the Telluride is a little bit longer. They both ride on the same 114.2 inch long wheelbase, which is pretty much the norm for the segment. But at an overall length of 196.9 inches long, the Telluride is about 0.8 inches longer than the Palisade, which again, at 196.1 inches long, is definitely no slouch. Both of these car SUVs are a little bit longer than most of the other competition, but a little bit shorter than something like the new Explorer or a Mazda uh, CX-9. Now, when you look at the wheel sizes between these two, vehicles. These are, these are the top trims. The Palisade Limited has a 20 inch wheel with multiple spokes and this shiny uh, silver metallic finish. While on the Telluride, they, do with a, they go with a black finish wheel. They're both riding in 245 with tires. The Kia has Michelin tires, while the Hyundai has Bridgetone tires, which are, again, these are coming from the factory. Now, a couple of other things that I'm noticing, uh, the wheel arches. On the Telluride, the wheel arches are, paint, are black molding. So if you don't like your black cladding, you're probably not gonna like the Telluride versus on the Palisade, Hyundai actually paints the cladding for a cleaner, more luxurious look. So if that's something that you uh, much prefer, you're gonna like the look of the Palisade versus the Telluride a little bit more. So from this angle, you're also gonna notice one more thing. The Palisade is about 0.5 inches lower and about 0.6 inches narrower versus the Telluride. From the rear angle, you can really tell the Kia is taller. It's a little bit wider. It actually looks like it has wider tires as well because Kia is creating that you know, wider look, the wider stance. So some of you may prefer the fact that the Palisade is a little bit smaller, but then some of you may like the uh, rugged look of the Telluride. Now, in terms of their rear designs, you can see none of these SUVs also share a single body panel. Let me first start with the Palisade. Now, this limited version of the Palisade does have a full LED taillight design where you'll have LED brake, light, brake lights and LED 
uh, turn signals. The reverse light is down here, but it is just an incandescent bulb. It's the same thing with the Telluride where they just put it in a different place. Even the exhaust tips, this is the dual outlet single exhaust that actually looks similar to what you find on the Telluride, but it's a little bit more rounded off here at the top portion of the Palisade. Again, there's also more chrome versus the Kia, which offers uh, more of a silver metallic trim. Now at the back, of the Telluride, you can see both manufacturers are spelling out their names of the vehicles because they want, they're very proud of the fact these have very strong names. And the Kia has this very interesting looking taillight design. The incandescent reverse light is there, and this is the LED turn signal. Down here, you can see just silver trim. Both of these crossovers have nicely integrated parking sensors, but I, I do much prefer the painted rear bumper that you get on the Palisade versus the Telluride. Now, opening up the cargo areas, you would also assume that both of these cars are similar, but because the Kia is a little bit longer, this one gives you slightly more space in the trunk area. Uh, Kia says you get around 21 cubic feet of space with the seats up. If you fold down this second row here, which you'll notice the second row is manual, Kia says you get around 46 cubic feet of space. And then if you, you fold down the second row captain chairs, you'll get around 87 cubic feet of space. That is actually matching that uh, as what you get in the Palisade. But in contrast, the Palisade has a little bit less space, 18 cubic feet of space. That's because it's slightly shorter and because this model here has a power folding third row, which does come standard on the uh, SEL premium and trims up. Uh, this is not even available on the Telluride. So if you guys are looking for a power folding third row, the Palisade offers it. Really only the Explorer, Explorer offers that feature. And then if you look underneath here, both SUVs offer some storage underneath the floor over there. And then if you fold down the second row again, the Palisade again offers around 87 cubic feet of space. Moving on to the interior of these two SUVs, I'm going to first start with the Palisade because this probably is the interior for me that is a little bit more luxurious, but that's really going to also depend on your specific taste. Now shutting the door, it has a very solid funk to it. It actually almost sounds like a European car. Now I want to show you the key fob for the Hyundai first. This is the corporate Hyundai key fob with their push button start. Compared to the Telluride, which has a completely different key, this actually comes with remote start on the key fob, which the Kia did not have. Now, I suspect with the Kia, you can add as a dealer accessory or use the uh, Uvo uh, Connect app, whatever, to do the remote start. But on the Hyundai, they at least give that to you. Now, to start it up, just put your foot on the brake and push the button here to fire up the engine. Now, another thing you're also gonna notice with the Hyundai's interior, this is very much like a luxury car. In fact, they emulate Mercedes-Benz with these two LCD screens. Now keep in mind, with the Kia, you cannot get this full 12 inch display like you can with the Hyundai, which I'll come back to in just a moment. Now in terms of the materials, everything in here is a very nice material. You have a soft touch injection molded plastic at the top. There's a very strange looking sparkly piano black plastic trim on the dash and on the door panels here which I'm not sure how I feel about it. It does look different and I applaud them for not using like a wood grain trim like they use in the Telluride. The door panels are also soft touch over here. And there's this very beautiful diamond quilted leather on the door panels and the speaker covers. They're a metal cover here on the 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system, which looks fantastic. It also sounds fantastic. I will say both of the sound systems in these cars sound good, but I guess for bragging rights, the Hyundai has 12 speakers versus the 10 speakers in the Kia. The steering wheel you can see is also tilt and telescoping, but it's not a power adjustment. I wasn't expecting that feature. And the seats that I'm sitting in here, these are a 12 way power adjustment with a two person memory and they are heated and cooled in the first row and in the second row for both cars. I also like the steering wheel on the Hyundai more. It's got a three spoke design. It's got a nice fat bolstering extension it actually has paddles on the wheel as well. You can't get the paddle shifters on the Telluride. So very interesting differences to see here versus the uh, Kia. Now you can see here going to the head unit over here. This is Hyundai's Blue Link Telematics. It's a 10.25 inch display. I kind of wish that they got rid of this black plastic area and just combining the two screens together, but that's kind of what Mercedes does. So uh, I guess that would be a complete rip off of Mercedes. But as you can see, there's the home screen. You can kind of customize the widgets and the layout there if you'd like. I right now have it on GPS, audio, and then your information over there. Going over here, it does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That is standard equipment. Even if you guys go for the base trim, which would have an eight inch touchscreen display versus this 10 inch display. I also really like the snappiness of it. When you pull up the ways, you can see it takes up the entire screen over here, which is nice, especially in some brands where they only take up a small portion of the screen. There's also a little dedicated button here to go back to the Hyundai uh, system, which is nice. And if you want to look at the actual map display, there is the Hyundai GPS, the factory embedded one. It has definitely been beefed up in terms of its speed. 
it looks okay. It's nothing super fancy. This is where it's going to remind you this is not uh, a luxury car. Now, when you put the vehicle in reverse, you can see it does have a 360 degree camera with trajectory. Uh, and it shows a top-down view. You can also change different views. It's got parking sensors. It's got a side view camera. And it also has that blind spot monitoring camera. So if I signal right, you can see it shows a camera on the right side. If I signal left, it shows a camera on the left side. Now, compared with the Kia, because the Hyundai has the digital display, it shows it on each, uh, either fills out the TAT or it fills out the Speedo. I'll show you the difference in the Kia when we get into that vehicle. Now, looking at the center stack over here, I like the metal buttons over here. There are metal hard buttons. There's a volume knob. There's a tuning knob. There's tri-zone automatic climate control in this vehicle where you can basically ch uh, choose your different climate setting based on whatever zone you're in. I also like the drive mode selector over here. It's very much easy to see. There's a lock button here for the four-wheel drive system. And what I like about this car is when you switch the drive modes, I'm in comfort now, you can see it does this cool little effect in the instrument panel. It actually changes the gauges to all red. Uh, it even shows a little graphical res representation on the screen there. This looks very nice. And in fact, it looks a lot nicer than that new Ford Explorer that I sat in, uh, that I drove over the weekend. And I also think that it, it's just much faster. The response is much quicker. It doesn't lag as much, which is basically how a modern infotainment system should do. Now, uh, the another difference you're going to notice, the Hyundai has a push-button transmission selector for the 8-speed auto. I'm not sure how I feel about the push-button transmission selector, but it does take up a little bit less space in this center console here, which they were able to give you with this nice open area here where you can see if you push this button, it gives you two cup holders. There's a wireless phone charger over there. And if you'd like, you can kind of just close this off. It has this very interesting silver material and there's also a nice storage cubby down here at the lower area which you cannot get on the kia so again the hyundai frees up a little bit more center console space for you, so it gives you more storage the center console itself over here you can see it's roughly the same size as the kia there's a 12 volt over there and there's a usb port a little bit more storage uh, and stuff like that the seats also are very comfortable in this car this is the premium upgraded napa leather with more of that diamond quilt it's got some contrasting piping. These seats look the same as the Telluride, uh, but the leather also feels just as nice. So they're pretty much the same. I think that's the only interior component, component they share. The glove compartment you can see is a pretty good size. It's damped, but not lined with felt. So above me, you can see this Palisade has a sunroof. This is just a standard size sunroof, but because it's the limited, it actually has the uh, larger sunroof at the back where it's kind of like a two piece. Uh, which is nice. The Kia actually has the same thing. Some competitors offer a full, you know, sunroof where it didn't have this portion here uh, in the center. But overall, this interior is still very nice. Let's hop into the Telluride and let's compare the interior versus the Palisade. All right, so hopping into the interior of the Telluride. Now, as you can see, the design is completely different and the door sounds exactly the same as the Palisade. It's a nice and solid European feel. Now, to start the vehicle up, here's the key fob. For the vehicle, you can see this is that uh, detonator style key that they introduced on the Stinger, but no remote start. I think Kia should have just added remote start to this key to match what you get on the Palisade. Now start it up. You can hear it actually has a very similar sounding chime, but aside from that, the rest of this interior is completely different. And really GM and Ford could learn a thing or two about Hyundai and Kia with sharing platforms because there is an entirely different team and it shows just the whole ambiance, the atmosphere in this interior is just completely different. Now, I will say I'm not a fan of the wood grain that Kia is using in this car. It actually does look okay, but when you touch it, it's very obvious that this is a fake wood grain. It just feels like plastic with it has like a, a sticker that's been uh, glued onto this to make it look like wood. Now, some of you will prefer this interior and I actually prefer the design and look of this interior. You can see it's got a screen that sticks up. It's the same 10.25 inch display display the materials in here uh, the kia uses a um, faux stitching on the dashboard here where it's a soft touch injection molded plastic there's some genuine looking aluminum trim although i heard that this is not a real aluminum trim it is hard touch plastic down here and overall it's not quite as luxurious feeling as what you get from the hyundai which has a very unique look and feel to its own the door panels are soft touch on this portion here um, you have one touch power up and down windows on all four uh, there is no none of that diamond quilted leather on the door panels here and the speaker covers for the uh, Harman Kardon sound system in here are just plastic. They're not metal like what you get in the Hyundai. I also prefer the Hyundai's steering wheel a little bit more than the Kia's. This is a four spoke design, but I will say if you like to rest your hand here while you're driving, the Kia's is more comfortable to do that. It also has a tilt telescoping function, but no paddles on the wheels. So if you guys are looking for paddles, not sure why you'd want that in this segment, um, the Hyundai is the one that gives that to you now. In relation to the Hyundai as well, the instrument panel, you can see 
It is a mixture of an analog and an LCD. This has the seven inch supervision instrument or infotainment instrument cluster, which is optional. This only comes on the SX trim. You can basically change the way this looks by pushing this button on the steering wheel. You can do the same thing for the Hyundai, but the Hyundai offers a little bit more customization. And if you see, if I signal right, it shows you a screen in the center what's there. If I signal left, same screen, it just shows you what's there. I think I prefer what's on the Hyundai, but again, that's because it's got a full 12 inch digital display. Now coming over here to the center stack, you're gonna notice the vents are even different. You have three vents on the Kia, but you also still have knobs here. You have a volume knob, a tuning knob, you have your tri-zone automatic climate control, and then you have your cooled seats as well, which Kia mounts over here. There's these two large grab handles here on each side of the center console, which I like. Uh, and then Kia also gives you some good storage over here. The um, wireless phone charger is over here along with your USB. Your cup holders are much more traditional versus the Hyundai. And some of you may prefer this look and you also may prefer the traditional shifter. This has the eight speed auto that's in the same uh, car as the pal or the same Palisade. It does have a traditional shift knob when you put into reverse there, same 360 camera with parking sensors and whatnot. So I actually prefer the traditional shifter with the manual mode over here, which is probably why Hyundai gives you the paddles because it doesn't have a manual mode obviously on the actual gear shifter. Um, the center console here, the center stack, you can see there's also uh, your drive mode selector over here. It's a nice little wheel that's right by the shifter. Um, basically, the Kia shows you, you know, what drive mode you're in, and it shows you a little bit of a change, but it doesn't show you the same kind of look that you get on the Palisade. So it's a little bit simpler. Some of you may prefer the simpler look. There's a couple of more buttons here for the start stop for the 360 camera. Now, I'll briefly talk about this. As you can see, it does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It's the same size as what you get on the uh, Hyundai. And if you want, you can also go to the Kia embedded navigation system, which actually looks exactly the same as what you're gonna get on the uh, Hyundai. It's been beefed up. It's much quicker to use nowadays. And I also really like the infotainment systems in both of these cars. They're pretty much on par with the rest of the competition. Now, overall the seats, you can see, they don't have the same diamond quilted pattern that you get on the Hyundai, but they also are heated and cooled. This is the Napa leather that you get with the um, SX trim. Uh, you also have the same kind of arrangement for the sunroof above me. Uh, it's got an opening over here. Well, this, this is a standard size sunroof. It'll open and then you have the sunroof in the back where you can uh, open up the shade, but it actually doesn't physically open. Uh, the center console uh, over here on the driver's side or in between the seats, you can see, is roughly the same size as what you're gonna get in the Palisade. It's just a completely different design. There's more piano black plastic trim. So if you're not a fan of the piano black plastic, you're gonna prefer the Hyundai. And then of course the glove compartment, it is the same, actually this looks a little bit smaller, but it is lined with felt versus the Hyundai, which wasn't lined with felt. So overall, the interior of this vehicle, hugely different, but also very comfortable. A couple of features, you know, here and there that's differentiating it from the uh, Hyundai, but some of you may prefer more the traditional elements that the Telluride gives you. So jumping into the second row, let's first start with the Kia. Now, both of these vehicles have incredibly roomy second row seats. In fact, when I first sat in these earlier this year, I actually thought that they were the most spacious in the segment, and they were the first vehicles to introduce second row cooled seats. Both cars offer the cooled seats. It's an option on this SX trim, part of the Prestige package, standard on the Palisade Limited, although the Palisade is a little bit more expensive to start. Now, as you can see, these seats move forward and back. The captain's chairs come on the top trim of both vehicles. So if you guys are looking for an eight passenger configuration with the bench, you have to drop down to the lower trim levels. And in terms of features, you can see very nice. You have cup holders over here. You have rear seat air vents. Uh, you can control your dome lights over here. The automatic climate control is actually on the roof here uh, for the Telluride. It's actually in a different location for the Palisade. And you get two USB charging ports over here, uh, which is very nice. And there's a nice little area here where you could get to the third row. And then there are these armrests here that also adjust a little bit for height. So in terms of comfort, this is very nice. Um, you also have this little manual sunshade over here. Uh, which is great and honestly if you are looking for one of the most spacious and feature-packed second rows both of these vehicles offer a lot but let me hop into the palisade really quick and we'll compare the second row now unsurprisingly hopping into the, the second row of the palisade you're basically going to get the same thing as the telluride it's a very open very airy environment that is packed full of features including those lovely 
cooled seats back here in the second row, which is standard on the Palisade Limited. Now, a couple of things that I'm noticing in terms of the differences. Now, the climate control settings you can see are down here on the center console. Uh, you have a power outlet down, down over here with a, a standard one uh, 12 volt. Your two USB ports are mounted in the same position in the Palisade as the Telluride. So that's a kind of one similarity there. And then you can see there's also these manual sunshades, there's vents, there's that suede Alcantara material. And if you'd like, you can close this sunshade over here but one thing I also like about the Palisade is you have that diamond quilted leather on the back doors as well. It really just adds to the whole feeling of luxury. Now these seats, they practically do the same thing. You can adjust the recline of them. The armrest here doesn't actually adjust in terms of the height of the armrest. So in the Kia, you heard those extra clicks where you could adjust it in several different heights. The Hyundai just has one up and down position. You can move these seats forward and back and they also offer a nice pass through to get into the third row. Now getting into the third row of these vehicles is also really easy and they have one of the most spacious third rows in the segment. Now on the Palisade first, there's a button here that you can just touch over there. It actually will move the captain chairs forward uh, and you can see it reveals a very large amount of space to get into the third row. And the third row seats three across. Some competitors only seat two across, which is nice if you guys need to actually fit eight people in this vehicle. Now getting inside, I am five foot seven, so I'm not terribly tall, but I will say that if you are under six feet tall, this is with the seat all the way back. In fact, I would actually be comfortable in this third row with this seat all the way back. You could actually move the seat forward and the knee, my, my knees wouldn't be touching this. But in terms of legroom, Hyundai actually says you have around 31 inches of legroom. I imagine that's when you have uh, 42 inches of legroom in the second row over here, which you could slide forward to give a little bit more space. Now, in terms of the comfort, the seats actually aren't bad back here. They are covered in this nice leather that's the same material as the rest of the seats. And in terms of features, you can see there is a power recline feature back here, which is really nice. You get that as a, pl a plus with the power folding third row. And Hyundai even includes a USB back uh, pocket over here, or a USB port for charging. So even third row passengers aren't shafted, but let's hop into the third row of the Telluride and see if they have similar features back here. So getting into the third row of the Telluride is also the same kind of proposition. You have a captain's chair here. There's a button here on the top. Push that button and the seat will slide forward automatically to reveal pretty much the same amount of space back here. And again, it sits three people across because these two are some of the largest in the segment. Now, in terms of the space, getting back here, you know what? This seat is all the way back, but my knee isn't touching the back here like it is in the Palisade. I genuinely wasn't expecting that. So maybe there is a little bit more space in the third row here in the Telluride versus the Palisade. Regardless, at five foot seven, I could sit back here on a longer trip. It's incredibly comfortable. And if I wanted more space, I could ask the passenger here to scoot forward a little bit to give me a little bit more space. Now, in terms of features, there is no power recline feature back here over the third row because the Palisade has that feature where the third row folds down. But you do have a USB port on both sides of the vehicle, two cup holders over here, and then you have your own set of rear seat climate controls. So again, the third row is very usable for average size adults and it, it's what makes the Palisade and the Telluride so desirable in this segment. So although both of these SUVs were co-developed off of the same architecture, by looking at them, you wouldn't be able to tell because Hyundai and Kia each gave these SUVs their own distinct identity to go with the actual brands. And really the only thing they share is when you look underneath the hood. Now, the one thing I like about both of these SUVs is the fact that their hoods are held up with hydraulic struts as opposed to a prop rod, which some competitors actually end up doing. Now, when you look underneath the hood of both vehicles, you're gonna find the same exact engine. It's a 3.8 liter gasoline direct injection V6. It's a naturally aspirated V6. And in both vehicles, they both make 291 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. It all goes out through a Hyundai and Kia designed eight-speed automatic transmission with front-wheel drive as standard, and you'll pay about $2,000 extra for all-wheel drive. Now, both of these vehicles also are able to tow about 5,000 pounds, and the Hyundai is surprisingly the lighter one. This, way, this weighs around 4,600 pounds, while this one weighs about 4,700 pounds, so a 100-pound difference. And uh, the Hyundai is rated at 19 in the city, 24 on the highway. The Kia is also rated 19 in the city, 24 on the highway. Both of these vehicles are gonna use regular grade gas. So to start the driving scene portion, I'm going to be doing both cars at night or kind of like right before sunset because a lot of you guys have said that you really like these night drives. Now I'm gonna first start with the 2020 Telluride because this is the one that came out first. Uh, I love this car when it first came out. Uh, and in terms of the interior, the lighting and whatnot, uh, it's very complete in here. In fact, Kia offers 64 different uh, choices of ambient lighting color that you can choose from. Same thing with the Palisade. That's what they essentially share to mess 
mess with the LED lighting, you go here to setup, uh, you go here to vehicle, and you go here to lights, and you can see here, um, there are, you can adjust the brightness of it. I'm going to leave it on full brightness. And then of course there are several different colors to choose from here that are preset colors. Uh, if you want, you can also go here to set custom color and you can see, you can choose exactly which color you'd like. The Kia puts ambient lighting on the under portion here of the dash on the door panels, uh, on the driver's side, of course, and on the back doors. There's no led lighting down here in the center console, which we'll go into the Hyundai after this. And we'll show you guys what the interior looks like in the dusk setting as well. But let's go ahead and get started here in the uh, 2020 Telluride. Now this car, to me, I just kind of feel right at home in it. Um, this is the bigger car, as I said, and when you first get in the Telluride, you kind of feel that it is a little bit bigger. Uh, you notice that you sit up a little bit higher. You notice that it's a little bit wider. The hood on this car bulges up a little bit more. So it feels more like a, I guess more like a rugged machine. It definitely feels um, much more wide versus the Palisade. Now, just like the Palisade, the Kia also gives you that blind view mirror, but uh, instead it just shows you what's in the screen in the center of the display as opposed to on the right side or on the left side because the Palisade, Palisade has the 12-inch the LCD display, whereas the Kia has two analog dials and then a 7-inch display in the middle, which actually does come standard on the Palisade if you guys don't get the limited trim. Now, driving the Palisade really feels like you're driving a luxury car from time to time. It's so smooth compared to what you remember from Hyundais and Kias from like five, 10 years ago, for example. This engine is surprisingly refined. I mean, the level of refinement that you get from it is typically what you associate with a Honda or a Toyota six cylinder, but Kia has done a really good job with this 3.8 liter V6. And the beauty about the two cars is they share the exact same powertrain and the same transmission. So, you know, getting up onto highway speeds, this is where these two cars are really gonna shine. You notice right away, there's plenty of passing power. It has good torque, it's very smooth. The eight speed auto is incredibly smooth and responsive. And right now I have the transmission in its sports setting here. I'll dial it over to smart setting, which kind of varies between um, comfort and sport, depending on how hard you're gonna be with the throttle or how aggressively you're driving. But really, this thing just settle, settles into a really comfortable cruise, which is perfect. This is exactly what you want in a family car like this. It's a soft, comfortable ride, but it's not floaty. Uh, this vehicle definitely is not the sportiest option. It, it's not that it's you know really lumbering and it feels like a, you're driving an old Buick, it's just, you know, not the sportiest. The Mazda CX-9 comes to mind and the new Ford Explorer ST, which is maybe with its not dial rotated a little bit too much on the uh, sporty end. But uh, in terms of the visibility, it's still a really good view out of this car. I mean, you can see everything out of the front. You have big side mirrors. Uh, Kia's DriveWise package is standard equipment on this car. So you have the, you know, uh, automatic emergency braking of intelligent cruise control. The blind view cameras are optional. The blind spot monitoring in front and rear cross traffic alert, of course, is optional. Uh, you have to get that on the higher trims. But just cruising down the road here, uh, if I put my foot down, in smart, smart mode, it takes a second for it to respond. You see, it actually turns red and the transmission goes into the sport mode at that time and it's really responsive. I mean, zero to 60 time for this car was probably around 7.4 seconds, um, which is competitive, a little bit slower than some of the competition, but it's not sluggish by any means. You do feel the torque is a little bit light. I mean, Kia's 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 would do wonders in this thing, but they're probably reserving that for uh, the Genesis SUV whenever that comes out, because it's technically a rear drive platform. And in terms of the driver assistance, it works well in this car. It has active lane keep assist, um, it has forward uh, auto adaptive cruise control with full speed stop and go. Um, this is basically one of the best long sh road trip cars that you can buy. In fact, I actually took this thing out from DC to Boston uh, earlier this summer, back in June. And I had seven people in the car. It was so good. I mean, yes, when it had seven people, you could feel the uh, heavier load that it was carrying around, but it still rode really nice. It still was plenty of room uh, for seven people to get comfortable. And these were seven adults. Um, and really, there's very little faults that I'm finding with this car. Uh, in terms of the interior and how it looks at night, I really like the you know 10-inch display over here, the tablet-style screen, although I wish Kia would get rid of this black border and just make it an entire screen. They could easily do a 12-inch screen if they got rid of some of this black border. The gauges, I actually like the traditional look of them with the 7-inch display. We'll hop into the Hyundai and we'll compare that. The steering wheel also is nice and light. Uh, it is you know responsive enough. It's not super quick, it's not darty, which is basically good. Um, you feel the the ride quality is comfortable. Even though this car has 20 inch wheels, it doesn't ride harshly, which is really important. Let me dial it over here to the sport setting and let's take this off ramp here. 
Now taking a highway off ramp in something this big, you feel the bulk of this car and the softness of the suspension, but not hearing too much in terms of tire squealing. Oh, there's some tire squealing a little bit, but <laughs> it's not bad, honestly. I mean, yes, I would be having more fun in an Explorer ST, but who's gonna be driving their family SUV that aggressively anyways? But really what you feel is just a really sturdy, really heavy feeling secure car. It actually feels a lot like a European car. That's that's the one thing about this vehicle. It feels like a German car. I still say that today, when, uh, which is what I said in the beginning of my review, or at the beginning when I first drove this thing a couple months ago, um, it feels basically like I'm dri driving a German car. Putting your foot down here, you can see the engine has plenty of power and it actually doesn't get too harsh when you push it past you know 6,000 RPM. Uh, it actually is really smooth. So again, those of you who remember older Hyundai and Kia engines for being you know noisy, for being rough, that is no longer the case uh, with this vehicle. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about, uh, the headlights in this car, these are full LEDs. Um, they also um, have an LED fog lights. You can't get LED fog lights on the Hyundai. Now, unfortunately, it's not quite dark enough. The sun is just starting to set, but you can really see the brightness of these headlights as it reflects uh, over the road. Uh, in the evening, it really casts a really bright uh, stream of light. The LED fog lights uh, also cast a nice tremendous shade of light at the lower end, which the Palisade lacks, which we'll get into the Palisade. We'll see uh, the differences there. But really in terms of quietness, very little road noise, very little engine noise. Everything in here is just really nice. I have very little complaints. So let's hop into the Palisade and see how it compares uh, with the Telluride. So hopping into the Palisades interior, it is obviously darker because it's a little after 740. So the sun has already set versus earlier with the Telluride, the sun was just about to start setting. Uh, first thing I wanna show you really quickly, um, if you want to adjust the interior lighting, you essentially go to the same thing with this car. You switch over here to setup and then go to vehicle and then go to lights and then go to ambient lights. Now, this car, I have the brightness on 10 also. It's on full full brightness. The color, it's the same purple color that I'm noticing. Let me actually shut off the light here so you can see. Um, Hyundai only puts the accent lighting underneath the door panels. Uh, it's on the door panels on the all four of the doors. And then there's also accent lighting here on the center console, um, which is nice, but they don't have the accent lighting under here. So I don't know if that's a cost-cutting thing or if Hyundai just wanted it to be a little different. You can see they're... Uh, same color, kind of similar light choices, but Hyundai kind of calls them different names. And you can also go here and set the custom color if you'd like. So again, this is all sharing with the Telluride. Same thing with the infotainment system. Hyundai just calls it uh, Blue Link as opposed to you know, Kiva, Kia with their Uvo. But uh, let's go for a drive in this one. Obviously, let me shut off the light here. So I apologize if, it, if it's a little dark, but you can see here, the Hyundai obviously has an extra screen. It's got a complete 12 inch LCD here in front of me, which does look good. Um, I kind of will criticize them though, how they didn't just combine the two like what Mercedes is doing by giving us one big screen. Remember this is a 10 inch display and then a 12 inch display over here. But driving the Palisade, I immediately feel that it doesn't feel quite as tall as the Telluride and it also doesn't feel quite as wide. It actually feels a little bit smaller, which is good if you guys want the vehicle to feel a little bit smaller. I wasn't expecting that, but the fact of the matter is this is about a half inch uh, narrower versus the Telluride and it's almost an inch shorter. Um, so yes, the Palisade does feel a little bit smaller. I also like the, the steering wheel in this car. It's uh, a three, or three spoke design as opposed to the four spoke design you get in the um, Telluride. I'm gonna switch over the drive mode here to Sport, and I also like the way the gauges look when you switch over to Sport. I mean, check out those red gauges. That looks pretty cool. Going over to Comfort there, you can see there's this cool little graphical representation. It's better than what I experienced in the new Explorer, that's for sure. The gauges look better, and they are much quicker when you switch between the drive modes. The engine in this car is also very smooth, just like the Telluride. Same exact engine, 291 horsepower, and the Palisade is about 100 pounds lighter than this car, than the Telluride. So you put your foot down here. I don't know if it feels faster. They feel exactly the same. I mean, 100 pounds is very negligible. Uh, the blind view monitoring camera for this vehicle, what I like about it, how it's different, because you have the two 12 inch displays, when I signal right, it shows exactly what's in your blind spot on the right side. So basically in the speedometer, if I signal uh, right, it shows it on the right side. I'm sorry, if I signal left can't get directions correct tonight. But um, I think that's a really cool detail. I wouldn't be surprised to see Kia eventually add that 
uh, 12 inch display on the Telluride, maybe for the next model year, there'll be a special edition version or whatnot. Um, it wouldn't take much for them to add that simple little display uh, and you know basically match what, what Hyundai is offering on the Palisade. Now going down the road here, you're gonna notice a couple things. It rides just as comfortably as the Telluride. They have very similar ride qualities. Uh, they have very similar steering feel and responses. This is a very soft and comfortable car. It's not a sporty car, which is fine. It's also very quiet in here. Um, in terms of quietness, I'd say it's, I don't know, it's equal. They're so similar in terms of quietness. I think the Telluride's engine is slightly louder though than this car. When you push the, the Kia's engine, I do notice it's louder. And I also like how the Palisade has paddle shifters. The Telluride doesn't offer paddle shifters. Perplexes me, it's confusing me, but they actually sort of respond reasonably well when you start pulling the paddles. but it's just very quiet in this car. It doesn't feel very, um, or it's not quite as loud as what I heard in the Telluride. So maybe Hyundai did that on purpose. They wanted to make this feel a little bit more refined, a little bit quieter. The headlights in this car, I will say, are not quite as, uh, they don't extend as far as the Kias. Uh, they're not, it's not that they're not as bright. These are full LEDs as well, but you don't have LED fog lights on this car, which I'm noticing the lower end isn't lit up quite as well as I would like it to be. Um, and because the headlights are mounted lower, you're noticing that the, the light doesn't extend as far as the Telluride. So the Kia has slightly better headlights, but mostly that's because the, of the LED fog lights and the, um, the fact that they're mounted a little bit higher. Now the driver assistance in this car, it's the same as the Telluride. You have, you know, Hyundai's full suite of driver assistance. You have adaptive cruise control standard, automatic emergency braking is standard. That blind view monitor is optional. The blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic and forward cross traffic is optional as well. In terms of the interior design, I don't really know which one I like more. I mean, sure, I like the additional screen that the Hyundai gives you, but I don't love the push button transmission selector. Uh, this console over here is just a completely different design. It's amazing to me how I feel like I'm driving a different car, um, even though they are the same car. That's, that's again, that's coming back to my statement of this is platform sharing done right because the two cars are identical, but they also have very different and distinct you know, feels from behind the wheel. I mean, obviously they drive very similarly, which is fine. Um, but when I'm in this car, I get a slightly different vibe. This gives me a more Mercedes vibe versus the Kia gave me a more Audi vibe. Taking this off ramp here, you can see the Palisade has the same feel that I got in the Telluride. It feels big and it feels heavy, but it doesn't feel, you know, unsecure. It just feels like you shouldn't be pushing this big, heavy family car around corners too quickly. And you can see this one also has automatic high beams, just like the Telluride. They don't swivel, neither car's headlights swivel, but when the high beams come on automatically, they are extremely bright. And that's the one thing I love about modern cars, bright headlights. It's just a pity you have to go for the Palisade with the premium package at least, or this limited to get the full LED headlights. The Telluride, you have to buy the SX trim. Put my foot down here, a little soft, but the transmission will shift all the way to about 6,200 RPM, and it's very smooth, relatively responsive, and this thing gets up to speed probably in around seven and a half seconds. So pretty good performance for what it is. Uh, this is going to be suffice for a lot of people, and if you guys prefer a six cylinder engine, you're going to really like these two vehicles regardless of you know which one you prefer design wise. They drive pretty much the same, but just know that the Palisade feels slightly smaller and that's mostly because it's narrower versus the Telluride. If you guys like a smooth six cylinder engine, you're going to like basically both of these vehicles because they have extremely smooth engines, uh, smooth transmissions, and just know that they drive basically the same, but the Palisade feels slightly smaller, smaller because the body is slightly narrower. And for some of you, that could be a deciding factor. Um, but for me, I don't really notice it too much. So I'm gonna have to go to the conclusion to figure out which one I actually prefer. So although both Kia and Hyundai were late to the three row SUV party, it's pretty easy to see that this time, both manufacturers spent extra time trying to figure out exactly what American families are looking for. If you spend any time in both of these vehicles, you'll realize that they offer a lot of what the competition offers, but unlike their predecessors, they are no longer lacking in terms of features, lacking in terms of space, and really trying to choose between the two of them really is like trying to choose between Coke and Pepsi. It just really depends on 
what your specific taste is, what flavor you prefer in terms of the exterior design. Because while they do have a couple of small differences here and there, you guys saw from the video, they both drive pretty similarly. They both have the same amount of features, although the Hyundai has quite a couple of extra features over the Kia, which I suspect Kia may add when they, whenever they decide to add a new trim level or do a, a small mid-cycle refresh to the Telluride. But really, the features that the Hyundai offers may not be quite enough to sway some of you to choose the Hyundai, and it's really gonna come down to the design. Now, unlike most of the competition, both of these cars offer a lot of the features that we're looking for, but they are priced significantly less than a lot of their rivals, especially when you look at the high end of these vehicles. Now, because I was able to spend a week with both of these vehicles, it's time to give both the Telluride and the Palisade an RPM rating. Now, starting with real world usage, I'm gonna give both of these SUVs a 10 out of 10 points, which is the first time I'm giving a 10 out of 10 points, simply because they really are amazing to use in the real world. They have a ton of space in the front, middle and third rows and in the trunk area they're really nice to live with they can you know be driven on a longer road trip and you can also take them out for date night or drive them to and from work so i'm going to easily give these vehicles a 10 out of 10 points for real world usage now moving on to the e for efficiency both of these vehicles are rated at 19 in the city and 24 on the highway in my weeks worth of testing i averaged about 18 in both cars in the city and on the highway i was able to get over 25 miles to the gallon in pure highway loops so again very good efficiency for what they are and they both use regular gas so i'll give them a seven out of 10 points for efficiency. Now moving on to the D for desirability. This is where I was kind of going to give one of these cars a higher rating simply because I like the look of one of them more, but because looks are all subjective, subjective I decided to give them the same rating for desirability. They're both gonna get an eight out of 10 points because they really are a hot product. If you're trying to buy one of these today, good luck trying to find one at your local dealer, even in stock and even trying to get it for MSRP because a lot of dealers are charging over sticker price for one of these cars because everybody wants them right now. Now moving on to the L for longevity. This is a Hyundai and Kia product which comes with a stellar warranty, a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty for the powertrain, five years, 60K for the bumper to bumper. That is better than most of the competition. While Hyundai and Kia may have had a few issues in the past with build quality, that's really no longer the case. Both companies have made huge strides in improving their build quality. So I'm gonna give both of them a seven out of 10 points for longevity, which is pretty much right up there with uh, most of the Japanese competitors. Moving on to the I for innovation. Both of these SUVs have a ton of features in them and they introduce some new features that you couldn't get in the competition. More specifically, those cooled second row seats, all the USB charging ports in all three rows. And really I can easily give both of these cars a seven out of 10 points for innovation simply because there is a lot of desirable features in these cars and they're packed in a price that's much more affordable. Now moving on to the N for need for speed. Both cars are packed with a 3.8 liter V6 with 291 horsepower, zero to 16 around seven and a half seconds may not sound exciting on paper but in the real world they have plenty of smooth power they have good transmission so i'm going to give these a six out of ten points for need for speed which again that could be improved but remember there's going to be a genesis version which should have a twin turbocharged v6 that rides on a different platform so i'll save that for a different review and then finally the last e for expense both of these cars are packed full of value. That's something that Hyundai and Kia has been known for. And they also both started around $32,500. The Hyundai is technically $100 cheaper. That's $32,600, that's $32,500. On the higher end, um, that one over there, that Telluride SX with the Prestige package is around $47,200, including destination. The Palisade's a little bit more. This is $47,600. But this one with the remote start, that's probably what a lot of you are gonna spend for remote start anyway. So again, packed full of value considering that some of the competition is well into the mid $50,000 range and even $60,000, depending on whatever you know option packages you get. So in terms of the E for expense, I'm gonna give both of these cars an eight out of 10 points for a grand total of 54 out of 70 points, which is actually the highest RPM rating that I have right now on the scale simply because um, we don't have too many vehicles yet but at 54 out of 70 points it's pretty easy to see that both of these cars are the top players in the three-row crossover. So now the million dollar question if it were my money which one of these two SUVs would I buy and this is a question that I actually struggled with over the last few days driving these two cars back to back and ultimately I had to go with the one that I preferred the look of more which is the 2020 Kia Telluride because for me the styling of this vehicle just appeals to me more more 
emotionally. And it's kind of like the difference between Coke and Pepsi. I prefer the taste of Coke, and I consider this to be kind of like the Coke, while I consider the Palisade to be more like the Pepsi. But really, if you're in the market for a three-row crossover, you need to put one of these at the very top of your list because they literally do offer everything that you're looking for at a much more affordable package than some of the competition. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this comparison test between the 2020 Palisade and the 2020 Telluride. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thank you.